Hi, my name is Megan, and this is Everything Lit. And today we have our usual guest, Vino. So if you hear crinkling or crying, it's him. It's always him. So today I'm here to bring you a book haul. And you're probably thinking, Megan, just a couple weeks ago, you posted a come shopping with me that showed self-restraint. You only bought two books. How do you have so many books to haul? Well, those are my pre-orders. And then that, you know, that beautiful Barnes and Noble that I showed you, they started their liquidation sale the next day. The owner of the building sold it. And so the Barnes and Noble didn't get their lease renewed and they had to either ship things to other stores or get rid of it and everything was 40% off. So I went back Wednesday and then I went back the next Saturday and uh, I did some serious damage. So I got this entire bag Wednesday and Saturday when I went back, I did so much damage. They gave me not only a bag, but a box. Um. I, <laughs> this was literally like, as I posted that video about self-control, I was like, <laughs> jokes on me. So let's talk about all the books I got in the past like month and a half. I feel like I kind of blacked out <laughs> when I went shopping because I don't remember half of what I bought. I was just like, it's 40% off. It's never going to be this cheap again. It's been on my backlist forever. Why shouldn't I buy it? So I've, I've, uh, trying to cut back now, but let's talk. The first set of books is the ones I bought on Wednesday. I went late in the evening. To, I just found out that this was happening. So I, we, I only had like a half an hour and I was in line for longer than I like looked around the store. I bought The Swimmers by Julia Atsuka. Um, I've read this author before. This is about several people who swim at the same pool each morning and um, what the swimming means to them and how their lives are going. I bought Not My Problem by Sierra Smith. Uh, this is about, this is YA. This is about a high school student who, um, it's kind of like an easy A situation where she solves other people's problems. Her, uh, a girl is having a meltdown about how many extracurriculars she has and our main character offers to solve her problem by pushing her down the stairs so her arm is broken and she does and then other people start coming to her to solve their problems it sounds kind of dark and kind of funny unlike as i said an easy a situation but instead of sex it's like hurting people unclear i bought the bones of ruin by sarah rowley this is YA. This is a historical fantasy about a circus and this acrobat who maybe can't die. Yeah, she cannot die. Very interesting to see how this goes and it's the first in a duology. I bought Highly Suspicious and Unfairly Cute by Talia Hibbert. I've been kind of waiting to get this and it was buy one get one 50% off, but I couldn't find two books but this time everything was 40% off. So I just got it. This is YA, it's a romance. I know it involves maybe hiking and kind of an academic enemies to lovers. I bought Sex and Rage by Eve Babbitts. This is a novel. This author was writing in like the 70s, I wanna say. Yeah, 1979, this originally came out. I picked this up because of another YouTuber I watch and I'll link her channel down below. Um, she's a comedian, she really likes Eve Babbitts and um, these are basically being reprinted because so many people have started picking up her work. I'll just read a part of the back. Um, this is about a dreamy young girl moving between Los Angeles and New York City. Uh, sex and rage delights in its sinuous dreamlike narrative and its spontaneous embrace of fate and work and further solidifies Eve Babbitt's place as a singularly important voice in Los Angeles, li Los Angeles literature, haunting, alluring, and alive. It's kind of giving me Bell Jar vibes by Sylvia Plath, but make it the 70s slash 80s. 
One of the books I featured in my Come Book Shopping With Me video, I went back and picked up It's Raining Men by Julie Hammer Hammerly. This is about a woman who is about to turn 40 and so she sends a bunch of texts and three men respond and they start going on dates and she's kind of trying to figure out what she wants in life. And I bought Bet On It by Jody Slaughter. This is a romance. Uh, it involves two people who are home visiting their like aunts slash grandmothers and they make a bingo based sex pact. Then I caved and bought X's and O's by Amy Lee. This has been on my radar and this is about a woman who is going back through her exes trying to find the one. It's kind of, I would compare it to that Chris Evans on a Ferris movie that might be called like 20 something. Oh, what's your number? That's what it's called. In that she enlists the help of a friend to meet, like re-meet these guys and figure out who she should be with. I bought Heartstopper Volume 3 because I have Volume 2 and it was on sale. So I was like, let's go. And this is YA. It's a graphic novel about Charlie and Nick and how their relationship, how they get together and then how their relationship grows. This does have a Netflix adaptation that just came out this year. Uh, but I think I liked the graphic novel a little bit more. Another book I highlighted in my Come Shopping With Me video that I then went back and bought is Queen Among the Dead by Leslie Livingston. This is a YA fantasy based on Ireland and some mythology that involves magic and magic being gone from the island and someone maybe bringing it back. I don't know. I love anything to do with Irish mythology, so I bought it. And then these beautiful notebooks were 50% off. A lot of them were like ransacked. They did not have a lot left, but I did get this one, very pretty black with flowers. And then I got a blue one with this tree. Um, they, and look at the foiling, beautiful. Let's move on to the mother load. These are in no particular order. I'm just grabbing and exploring. Thank you for listening by Julia Whalen. This is about an audiobook narrator who dreams of being an actress and a romance novelist who wants her to narrate his audiobook. And I think, you know, they fall in love. It's a romance. I don't know what to say. But the really interesting thing about this is that Julia Whalen, Whalen is an audiobook narrator. So that's cool. And this was nominated for the Goodreads Choice Awards for like best romance of the year. I got in the Wild Light by Jeff Zentner. Zentner. I have really liked this author's other books. I've read two of them and this is his newest release. It is about a young boy who has lost most of his family and he follows his best friend to this fancy academy and how that plays out. I bought Reader, I Murdered Him by Betsy Cornwell. This is a retelling slash continuation of Jane Eyre and I believe it follows the little girl Adele, Adelaide, however you want to pronounce it. And I'm trash for anything to do with Jane Eyre. So I picked this up. I grabbed Sing Me Forgotten by Jessica Olsen. This is a YA fantasy with magical elements. It's kind of giving Phantom of the Opera. It's about a young girl whose singing can manipulate memories. And then she meets a man. I grabbed The Mercies by Karen Millwood Hargrave. And this is a historical fiction set in Norway in 1617 and a bunch of the men in the town or maybe all of the men in the town die or disappear overseas and so this whole town is run by women and then what happens when the men start coming back. I picked up another Jeff Zentner book. This is Goodbye Days. This is about a boy who texts his friends and they die in a car crash and then people are calling for a criminal investigation because they think he had something to do with their deaths. It sounds heartbreaking and I think I'm just a really big fan of this author. I grabbed Sia Martinez and the Moonlit Beginning of Everything. This is by Raquel Vasquez Gilliland. This is about a young girl whose mother is deported, sent back to Mexico. She drives out into the desert every so often to try to find her mother and then one night 
an alien spaceship crash lands and her mother stumbles out fully alive. It, it, the sound, I, I don't even know how to explain how amazing this sounds, both in terms of like social commentary and like weird YA ness. I grabbed Rent a Boyfriend by Gloria Chow. This is a YA kind of fake dating scenario where this young girl rents like the perfect boyfriend to please her parents. I picked up Hard Sell by Hudson Lin. This is a male male romance. A, I would call it like a boardroom romance because they are both very high powered men. There is some sort of legal battle or corporate battle and they're I don't know if it's enemies to lovers but I'm I feel like it might be enemies to lovers I grabbed smash it by Francina Simone this is YA this is about a girl who makes a fuck it list because she doesn't want to be the shy wallflower anymore so she's pushing herself to go outside her comfort zone it sounds super fun I picked up Only a Monster by Vanessa Len. This is about a girl who finds out her family is monsters, like literally they are monsters, and the cute boy at the coffee shop is a monster slayer. It sounds adventurous, it sounds over the top. I bought It Only Happens in the Movies by Holly Bourne. This is a YA kind of romance about a girl who is dealing with her parents' divorce and thinks that romance isn't real, and then she meets a guy working at her local movie theater who makes her feel like romance actually isn't dead. Very excitingly, one of the books I went in there to find and couldn't, Finley Donovan Knocks Him Dead by El Casamano. I got this for 40% off. How crazy is that? This is the sequel to Finley Donovan is Killing It. It's kind of a cozy mystery comedy uh, in the vein of the Stephanie Plum series where Finley Donovan is mistaken for a contract killer, picks up where the first book left off. I grabbed The Mad Woman's Ball by Victoria Mass. Mass? This is a very thin book, but this is historical fiction. After reading The Woman They Could Not Silence, I'm very interested in um, insane asylums and how they treated the women because they would actually have, like, they would throw balls for, like, the mad women, and it sounds weird. I finally grabbed Men Explain Things to Me by Rebecca Solnit. I really wanted to see if they had any of her other books, but nonfiction is so difficult to navigate, especially like essays or explorations of like life in general. But this was in like the sociology or social like section. Uh, and this is a series of essays about like the relationships between men and women and men kind of talking down to women. Uh, this has been on my radar for a really long time, so I'm excited to finally get to read it. Uh, another book featured in my Come Shopping With Me was Murder Can Frost Your Donuts by Rose Pressy. I could not not buy this. It's got donuts, it's got Elvis, it's a cozy mystery. This is actually, I think, the fourth in a series. I need to pick up the other ones, but I bought this anyway, and this is part of the Haunted Craft Fair Mysteries. All things that I like. I finally picked up A Gentleman in Moscow by Amor Towles. This is a historical fiction set in 1922, but this man is sentenced to house arrest in a hotel, I believe. I'm interested to see where this goes. I've heard nothing but good things. Oh, this book got a little damaged. I don't think that was me. I grabbed Darius the Great Deserves Better by Adib Karam. This is the sequel to Darius the Great. I haven't read that one yet, but I thought I'd grab the sequel while it was on sale. This is a YA queer romance. I think there's a love triangle. It has to do with fandom. I really loved um, Kiss and Tell, the other book I've read by this author, and so excited to start reading the backlist. I grabbed The Passing Playbook by Isaac Fitzsimmons. This is about a trans boy who goes to a new school where he can just be himself. There's no history there with people knowing about his transition. Um, he's going to be on the soccer team, but then a discriminatory law might forcibly out him. I think it's also got a romance element. I love reading queer rep. I bought Things Fall Apart by Chinua Achibi. 
This is considered a modern classic written by a Nigerian author. I actually don't know what this is about. It's just been on one of my lists of like greatest books of all time. And this book was mentioned in The Lioness. It's set in the late 1800s. So I'm not sure which country it specifically explores. It just keeps saying Africa and African experience. So I'll find out. I picked up The House of Impossible Beauties by Joseph Kassara. This is another historical fiction. It takes place in the 1980s in New York City. This is a house of drag queens and queerness. Then the AIDS epidemic rips through the city. And this is based on the real House of Extravaganza and made famous by the documentary Paris is Burning. So this explores a bit of like a moment in queer history. And then I grabbed The Husbands by Chandler Baker. This seems like a reverse Stepford Wives situation where this woman is a high powered attorney and her husband is also a high powered worker. They move to this little suburban neighborhood where the men are stay at home dads and the women have the careers and something strange might be going on behind the scenes. When I went back to the Barnes & Noble, I picked up Heartstopper Volume 4 by Alice Oseman. I wanted to complete the set, now I just need the fifth and final volume, which isn't even out yet. So I've got time to catch up with these. So I was in line, re getting ready to, the line was crazy, but I was getting ready to pay and this book was sitting on a table, abandoned, and I have heard nothing but good things. This is Dress Codes for Small Towns by Courtney Stevens. And this is a YA, it's about a queer friend group. I've heard it's messy. I don't usually love messy books, but I've heard a lot of good things about this. Before I went, I made a list of a bunch of books that I would like to grab. And then I went online and saw if that Barnes and Noble had them in stock. And that was one that it said it was in stock online, but then I couldn't find it in the store because someone had picked it up and moved it. The store was, it was insane. I grabbed A Brief History of Seven Killings by Marlon James. This is a another historical fiction kind of book set in 1970s and it follows seven different people and maybe the death of Bob Marley. I really don't entirely know what this is about, but I read one of Marlon James's other books in grad school and really liked it. And this is not something that I thought that I would ever want to pick up and neither was the book previously. So now I'm just interested to see how he tells this story. And then I ran over to the poetry section and picked up a bunch of stuff just randomly. I grabbed Tracy K. Smith's Life on Mars. I read another book of poetry by her called Wade in the Water, which I liked for the most part but these were all, you know, they were all 40% off. So I just picked up a couple poetry books that I've heard of the authors and I'm gonna test it out. Maybe I'll do a, a quick poetry reading vlog. I grabbed Don't Call Us Dead by Denez Smith, um, another book of poetry. I have read one of their other works called Homie and I listened to the audiobook read by the author and it was fantastic. Absolutely loved it. I loved their poetry. I loved the way it sounded. I am glad to have a physical book and this was a National Book Award fin finalist. So um, I heard a bunch of stuff about this when it first came out. So I'm very excited to get another taste of their work. And then I grabbed, and this was the one I was looking for, Bless the Daughter Raised by a Voice in Her Head by Warson, Warson Shire. I know nothing about this book. I know it's poetry and I know one of my friends rated it really highly and said it was good. So I grabbed it. And then I went to the cozy mystery section because I'm a monster. Did I need to grab all these cozies without knowing if I'm gonna like them? No, I certainly did not. Were they all heckin' cheap? Yes, they were. I grabbed The Rocky Road to Ruin by Mary Allen. This is a cozy mystery about an ice cream shop. And as always, it's about a character who returns to their childhood home and opens their own business. This time, an ice cream shop. I grabbed Cloche and Dagger by Jen McKinley. This is about a woman who goes to England to live with her friend after, I think after a bad breakup, and then a murder happens and they try to solve it. Because I picked up the fourth in the series, I also picked up the third, cause they had it. It's called Murder Can Haunt Your Handiwork by Rose Pressy. And this is part of the Haunted Craft Fair Mysteries. So I wonder if, I wonder if each book focuses on like a different famous person and like, are they haunting? 
this series sounds more amazing every time I learn about it. So I need to pick up the first two. I grabbed Hummus and Homicide by Tina Kashian about a Mediterranean restaurant. And our main character is returning home to her parents' restaurant to help them run it. And then a murder happens. I grabbed Against the Current by Olivia Matthews about a girl who is returning to her family's bakery, a West Indian bakery. Someone dies, she tries to help solve it. This is actually the very first, and this is probably the most recent cozy that I've grabbed. It came out in 2023. So this is like a brand new release. Finally, I got Gone for Gouda by Karina Moss. Um, this is the sequel to Cheddar Off Dead. So I just, I grabbed the sequel because it was on sale. And I love cheese-based mysteries, apparently. We're not done yet, folks. I still have this whole stack behind me, but those are all the books I bought from the Barnes & Noble that was closing. Um, in total, I bought 34 on the Saturday and I bought, I think, 10 the Wednesday before. So I bought 44 books in a week. Yikes. And here in my goals video, I was like, I wanna buy less books. Girl, it's not working out. So let's talk about the books that I pre-ordered that I knew were coming. I have When You Get the Chance by Emma Lord. This is a Mamma Mia retelling, but um, the young girl doesn't know about her mother. And she's searching live journal to figure out how her mother and her father like fell in love. Well, first of all, the synopsis of this makes me feel old as hell because I was on live journal but it also sounds very cute and the main character really wants to be a Broadway star. So um, my only concern is that this is set in New York City and I sometimes have issues with books set in New York City because let me tell you, it's not the only, it's not the only place on earth. Okay. It's not. I pre-ordered TJ Klune's beautiful paperback editions. So The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune absolutely beautiful edges special edition it's it's so gorgeous um I've already read this loved it it's about this is about a uh, children who have magical abilities it's kind of like a very light fantasy and the foster homes that these kids go to and our main character Linus is a like corporate guy who investigates these foster homes and make sure they are up to snuff for the children and it's just lovely and warm and then I grabbed Under the Whispering Door and this is also just absolutely beautiful paperback I have this in hardcover as well um, but I had to pick up the matching paperback and this is about a man who dies and is sent to this like in-between place um, this in-between coffee shop to like learn about his life, I guess. It sounds like it's going to rip my heart out, honestly. I picked up Within These Wicked Walls by Lauren Blackwood. This is a Jane Eyre retelling. It's a horror, like gothic YA. It says it's about an exorcist hired to cleanse households of the evil eye. What? I didn't- okay. I didn't even know what this is about really. I just knew it was a Jane Eyre retelling. It was gothic, it was horror, and it might have a romance. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited to read this now. I pre-ordered Out of Character by Jenna Miller. This is a fandom story about a plus size girl who role plays online. And then I think her role play life and her real life start to intermingle and she doesn't know how to deal with that. Wild and Wicked Things by Francesca May, another book. This is a slight Gatsby retelling. I've heard it is sapphic and magic. It's set in the 1920s. It's got fantasy elements and magic. Radiant Sin by Katie Robert came in. This is the fourth in the Dark Olympus series and this is a Cassandra and Apollo retelling but Katie Robert does whatever she wants with these stories and I trust her to do it right. I've heard this one has a lot more political stuff with to do with this Olympus world, but it's also an ex's fake dating with spies kind of st story. Like that's what I've, it sounds fantastic. And finally, the most recent pre-order to come in is The Last Tale of the Flower Bride by Rashani Chakshi. This is an, a gothic haunting adult 
romance slash mythical gothic retelling. I actually don't know anything about the plot of this. I just know the buzzwords and that's how I want to go into it. But I have read Rashani Chakshi's Gilded Wolves series and I loved that. So if this has the same like luscious fantastical vibes, I'm going to love it. And the last set of books, very small, very uh, targeted, are the books that I went into a Barnes & Noble and bought. Like I was just bopping around and was like oh let me stop in this Barnes and Noble. It was not the um marathon shopping spree that I went on previously. You know what my birthday is coming up so we'll just call those you know 44 books mm, part of my birthday. It's fine. So the last four books I have bought in the past month are No Parm No Foul by Linda Riley. This is one of the books that I bought in my come book shopping with me video but I figured I'd haul it here. Um, this is the sequel to Up to No Gouda. It is a cozy mystery involving a grilled cheese shop. I really love the first one. It sort of kicked off this whole cozy mystery thing that I've been on. So I am excited to get to the sequel. And then recently I was able to get my hands on Cheddar Late Than Dead by Linda Riley. This is the third book in that grilled cheese shop mystery series. This um, was actually one of the books I went in looking for in that come book shopping with me and they didn't have it because it had just come out but I managed to find it when I got my hair done. I grabbed Do I Know You by Emily Wibberly and Austin Siegeman Broca. This is a romance. I again showed it in the come book shopping with me video but this is about a married couple for their fifth year anniversary. They go to this resort and they pretend that they don't know each other to sort of rekindle their romance and the vacation vibes sound like exactly what I want. And finally, I picked up The Fraud Squad by, by Kyla Zhao. This is about a woman who wants to be a magazine writer, like uh, who wants to write for a high society magazine. And she meets this guy who has connections and is going to take her as his date, I believe, to all these like high society functions. And she needs to make a name for herself and get out there. So she and her friends remake her and essentially like pretend that she is I think some sort of like royalty or some well-known something and this takes place in Singapore. It sounds very crazy rich Asians but make it like she wants like she knows what she's doing and she's in there to like specifically infiltrate rather than just you know an American girl who gets caught up in this. She's like doing it on purpose and that sounds amazing. So those are all the books that I have bought recently. Um, hopefully I won't be doing another haul for a couple months because I'm gonna chill out. You have watched my videos. One of my goals was to buy less books than I read this year. I have only read 12 books so far this year. I'm very behind on my goal. Don't worry about it. I have bought 94 total books. So I have some catching up to do. Seeing all these books piled in front of me makes me very excited to keep reading. So thank you for watching. Uh, let me know if you've read any of these books, if you recommend any of these, or if there are any that like I shouldn't have picked up. Let me know what you think down below. And if you like this video, you could like, you could subscribe to me, but really you can do whatever you want. And I'll see you next time.